Hey all, I'm Yitzu, and I welcome you to another short box from Warhammer 40k's Grim History from the Beyond. Last week, I ended my Crimson Fist series with its first chapter master, Alexis Pollux. This time, I shall be discussing the Dark Hunters. Now, for those of you who are unaware, I'm starting a series of boxes on minor chapters. As such, let me know in the comments if there is a minor chapter you'd like me to discuss. And while I'm on the subject of audience participation, if you enjoy this box, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And with that, let's discuss the Dark Hunters. Despite being a successor chapter of the White Scars, they are not fast strike specialists, but stealth specialists instead. I have no doubt some of you may be curious how a chapter that came from the Laughing Legion could be stealthers. Well, there is a legend of how the chapter earned its name, telling of certain White Scars Legion companies that fought in joint operations with the Raven Guard Legion, and on their return, the tactics these White Scars had learned from their brethren had become part of the battle code of their companies. Now, personally, I believe it has nothing to do with this, instead has to deal with their background. So let's start from the beginning. The Dark Hunters were founded sometime during the Clusiad War, which took place 550.m37 to 560.m37. A White Scars Khan by the name of Aengnaw was chosen to be its leader, with the 98 Battle Brothers in his command becoming the chapter's call. Upon this appointment, Aengnaw was gifted a power act. That was one of the many weapons wielded by the White Scars Primarch Jagatai Khan. It was a double-headed and still crackled with blue flame when Aengnar held it aloft. The Dark Hunters took this revered relic weapon of Jagatai Khan as their chapter's badge, the Axe of Justice, which represented vengeance and justice. They exchanged their White Scars livery for the Dark of Hunter Blue, becoming reborn as the Dark Hunters, even as they still bore the Honor Scars of Chagoras. Being but a single company, they were destined to become a chapter, and searched for a homeworld they could call their own. This homeworld turned out to be the dark plant known as Phobion. Moving on. Their first campaign was the Clusiad War. Now, the Clusiad War was a major conflict that raged from 550 to 560.m37 on the northwestern fringe of the Segmentum Obscurus, between the Imperium of Man and the rogue tech priests known as the Apostles of the Blind King. You see, the Blind King and his fellow rogue tech priests, the Apostles of the Blind King, viewed humanity as an affront to the Omnissiah. After finding many wondrous relics from the Dark Age of Technology, they decided to start wiping out what they considered humanity. As they went, the cult's power grew ever more as the number of followers drastically increased. Now, as interesting as this war may be, time constraints require me to jump forward a bit to what is significant in direct connection with the Dark Hunters. But don't worry, I'll go into more detail next week, when I discuss some of the notable Dark Hunters. So during the Clusiad War, there was a battle known as the Battle of Bloodsteel, where the Dark Hunters were deployed to successfully contain an assault by the Warpsmith Hilgal and his demon engines, including the mutated Warlord Titan, Repellus Maximal. As would be expected of any group under such conditions, the chapter took severe casualties. In the year 936.m38, over 1300 years after the Clusiad War, in the year 936.m38, the supposedly dead Blind King attacked the Dark Hunter's homeworld, Phobian. As the Dark Hunters defended their homeworld, their tried and true tactics and methods of war, despite being very successful in the past, were ineffective when they encountered a battle group of titans. 
Chapter Master Julianai Khan ordered the Eighth Company to penetrate the hull of the leading warlord class Titan, and the Eighth Company fought on and succeeded in destroying the Titan from within, granting the victory to the Dark Hunters. But it was at a great cost, for in the conflict, 403 Battle Brothers, nearly two thirds of the chapter, died. Their names never forgotten to be revered in the annals of the chapter forever, but chief among those names enrolled are those of Captain Mithrian of 8th Company and Sergeant Aiken, also of the 8th. Their deaths and those of the brethren heralded a new beginning for the chapter and a new method for making war, becoming shadows of their former selves. And to mark this eclipse, they took unto themselves the motto, Umbra Summis, we are shadows. It is my belief that these events are what caused the true change in their specialization and methodology. Not by being a white scar company that spent time with the Raven Guard, and as such their specialty rubbed off on them, but one created from dire events changing how a chapter perceives its continued survival and use to the Imperium. To emphasize this, many refer to this new beginning as the Dark Hunter's second founding. Now let's discuss the beliefs of these grim and resolute warriors. Due to the events of the Dark Hunter's first campaign as the chapter fighting against the demon engines of the warpsmith Hilgal and the mutated warlord class titan Repellus Maximal during the Battle of Bloodsteel, the chapter gained a deep mistrust towards the machines, which can all too easily be perverted by the powers of chaos. Likewise, the chapter's relations with the tech priests of Mars became strained at best. It is without a doubt that the Phobian War deepened the mistrust towards machines and has caused even greater strain on relations between the chapter and the tech priests of Mars. It should go without saying, but Dark Hunters retain a particular hatred and disgust for the demon engines of chaos. Now to discuss the Dark Hunter's homeworld, Phobian. It is an ice world that is sometimes referred to as a dark world because the sun never shines. The chapter's fortress monastery, Moors Angnaw, is built atop the 12,000 meter shining mountains called Urgahast Range. The plant is a home to nomadic tribes such as the Sarmates and the Nokairos. The Sarmate people who roam the moonlit plains of the night world fight in silence, for to cry out even in pain is to attract the attention of the great Phobian bats, which hunt the skies on silent wings. Normally, these bats prey on the herds of pale, cannibal horses which roam the basin plains. But they will eat a man just as happily. So hunting parties are often formed to clean out those roosts that are too close to human habitation. The Dark Hunters took their name from these beasts, and their tactics, swift, silent, and merciless, from the people who hunt them. Now before moving on, I must explain the inconsistency created by my last statement. Now, at the beginning of the Vox, I gave you the impression that they were called Dark Hunters from the beginning, which is how it appeared to me also. But from finding this statement, I've come to certain theories upon this. First, that either their original name was omitted, or didn't have one until finding their homeworld. The second piece is specifying what tactics they utilize currently and what they drew it from. Now let's talk about some of its uniqueness. First off, like the White Scars chapter, they have a different title for their chapter master. The title of their chapter master is Karn. Likewise, they also have different names for each company. For example, the first company is called Ardunai Company. The third company is called Mortai Company, or the Fated Ones, and the eighth is called Ansar Company. Another unusual aspect is that it would appear as if they first train in axes for melee weapons. This is a self-made conclusion based on the fact that Dark Hunters send their aspirants into the black caverns below Phobian's surface, 
in squads to baptize their axes in the blood of Phobian bats. It is my opinion the fact that only axes are mentioned and that they baptize them suggests that they will either be used in the future either for training while going through the space marine process or, like it was recorded by Chris Robertson in the text of Sons of Dorn, they can be used in the creation of a new weapon or tool. Of course, Chris Robertson is probably going off the basis of Space Marine being around 7 to 8 feet tall. By the way, for those of you who want to know more about the Space Marine creation process, Zekthar and I covered it in a vox titled Becoming a Space Wolf. To end this vox, I'd like to say that I would not blame the Dark Hunters if they have any anger or mistrust towards the Raven Guard. Maybe I should explain. In 996.m41, Highfleet Leviathan invaded the world of Lonal, only to face stiff resistance from the Dark Hunters. Unknown to the Dark Hunters, the Raven Guard had also deployed on the planet. Also unbeknownst to them, the Raven Guard was using them as bait. When the Raven Guard's elaborate trap was sprung, a dozen Hive Tyrants were slain. In my opinion, I feared that laying them know ahead of time would be the least that they could do. For that matter, given the right circumstances, coordinating with the Dark Hunters may have been even more successful. Well, I hope you enjoyed this short box. Next, I shall discuss the many conflicts the Dark Hunters have been in and some of their known characters. As a reminder, if you guys have any minor chapters you'd like me to discuss in the future, please leave it in the comments. And don't forget, please follow, like, comment, subscribe, or become one of our merry band and join our membership program. Have a great day, and as always, until next time, this is Yuxin, signing off.